Here you're asked to solve for the ratio of conjugate base and weak acid given a pKa and a desired pH. We're going to take advantage of the buffer equation or the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. First thing we're going to do to solve for this ratio A minus over HA is take the difference between the pH and the pKa or basically subtract the pKa from both sides. So pH minus that pKa gives us negative 0.21. That's equal to the log of A minus over HA. Now we need to take the inverse log of negative 0.21. And you do that by taking 10 raised to that value. So the ratio of A minus over HA is 0.617 rounded. Now let's see if that makes sense regarding where the pKa is and what that ratio is telling us about the amount of base to acid. 0.616 obviously is less than 1, so it's telling us that there's more acid than conjugate base. So that would tell us that the pH, the desired pH, should be less than the pKa. And in fact, it is. So this answer seems reasonable. Here is a similar problem where the pKa is 10.3 and the desired pH is 10.5. In this case, we would anticipate more conjugate base than weak acid because our pH is greater than the pKa. So our ratio of A minus to HA should be greater than 1. And in fact, when you plug in the numbers, it is. It's 1.58. Step 1 is subtract pKa from both sides. Step 2 is to raise 10 to that difference that we just calculated to get the ratio of A minus to HA, which is 1.58. Here we're asked to determine the gram amount of a conjugate base form of a potassium salt, particularly potassium cyanide. How many grams of potassium cyanide should be added to a 2 liter solution of hydrocyanic acid in order for the pH to be 8.689. The pKa of hydrocyanic acid is about 9.4. The desired pH is 8.689. Comparing the desired pH to the pKa, that clues us in that the ratio of A minus to HA should be between 0 and 1. In other words, we should have less moles of conjugate base as compared to acid, more acid than conjugate base. So therefore, the ratio of A minus to HA should be less than 1, and that's what is calculated. I determine the ratio of A minus to HA as I did before, subtracting pKa from both sides, then taking the inverse log of that difference. In this case, it's negative 0.708. Now I have the ratio of A minus over HA, but now I'm added another line to just show that our unknown is the moles of A minus, because we know the moles of HCN by multiplying 2 liters times the molarity. Now I converted to moles and I did not leave it in molarity, because ultimately what we need here is moles of conjugate base to get us to grams of conjugate base. Yes, I could have left this as 0.117 molarity in the denominator, but ultimately the two liters would have came in eventually to get to moles anyway. Then I proceeded to solve for x, or the numerator, which is moles of conjugate base. And that is simply done by multiplying the mole amount of acid by the ratio 0.195. Moles of cyanide equal moles of potassium cyanide because there's a one-to-one -one ratio between the potassium cyanide formula and the moles of cyanide in that formula. So the molar mass of potassium cyanide is approximately 65 grams per mole. Again, our unknown is the moles of cyanide, which again is moles of potassium cyanide. So here, 
we could calculate the moles of potassium cyanide by multiplying the mole amount by molar mass. So I'm going to enter 3 In this problem, we're asked to determine the grams of ammonium bromide to prepare a buffer with 0.226 molar ammonia and a pH of 8.64. The pKa of ammonium is about 9.26. The pH is lower than the pKa, so that means the mole amount of acid is greater than the mole amount of conjugate base. So if we proceed through the calculations as we did before, the ratio of conjugate base to acid is less than 1, 0 0.24251. Well that makes sense because we need more acid than conjugate base. So our unknown is moles of ammonium. Again I converted the molarity to moles simply by multiplying the 1 liter by the molarity of 0.226 and solving for x, which is in the denominator now, again x is the moles of ammonium, we divide the moles of ammonia by the ratio 0.24251 and we see that we do in fact get a larger number in moles than the moles of conjugate base, which makes sense because we need more acid. The moles of ammonium bromide is the same as the moles of ammonium because of the one-to-one -one ratio between ammonium and um, the formula ammonium bromide. The molar mass of ammonium bromide is about 98 grams per mole. Therefore, the gram amount of ammonium bromide, I'm going to enter as 107.5. We're asked to design a buffer that has a pH of 4.73. We are to use one of the weak acid conjugate base pairs below. Because the pH is 4.73, we're going to choose the first one, hydrogen oxalate, which has a pKa of 4.19. In general, you want to choose a weak acid that has a pKa close to your desired pH. We are asked to calculate the grams of potassium hydrogen oxalate, the potassium salt of the weak acid, and the grams of the potassium salt, which would be potassium oxalate. In the spreadsheet, I laid out all the numbers and the calculations. The pKa 4.19, the pH 4.73, and then I proceeded as I did before using the buffer equation. I determined that the ratio of conjugate base to weak acid is 3.46737 to 1. In other words, there is more conjugate base than there is weak acid. And that should make sense because the pKa is 4.19 and we want a higher pH of 4.73. So we need more base than acid. The problem though states to have one mole, one molar of weak base in one liter of solution. Essentially one mole of the weak base. The numerator and the ratio of A minus to HA is going to be set to 1. So our unknown is the moles of weak acid, the denominator. Therefore, I have 1 over X equals the ratio of 3.46737. Solving for X, what we need to do here is divide the 1 by the mole ratio to get 0.2884 moles of weak acid. What we see here is for every one mole of conjugate base there is 0.2884 moles of weak acid. This is consistent with the fact that the pH is higher than the pKa, meaning we need more base. So the moles of potassium hydrogen oxalate, KHC2O4, is the same as the moles of the hydrogen oxalate anion. The molar mass of the potassium hydrogen oxalate compound is 128. Therefore, using that number and the mole amount, we get 36.9156. I'm going to enter 36.9. And then for the molar mass of the potassium oxalate, which is the potassium salt of the base, 
is 166, and we need one mole of that, so the gram amount is 166. I'm going to enter 36.9 for the weak acid and 166 for the weak base. In this problem, we're asked to design a buffer with a pH of 11.5 using nitrogenous weak bases. And when we have nitrogenous weak bases, we'll have cations as our conjugate acid in this case. Even though we're going to use a nitrogenous weak base and a conjugate acid, we're still going to use the pKa of, in this case, the conjugate acid because we're still using the buffer equation or the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in the form of pH equals pKa plus log of this ratio. So we're going to stick with pKa. And I'm going to use this first one because it's closest to our desired pH. So substituting in the numbers, and I'm going to proceed using the buffer equation as I did before, and the log of the ratio is a positive 0.88. And that's going to make sense because that's going to give us the actual ratio of base to acid as 7.58 and change. This makes sense to have more base than acid because our desired pH is greater than our pKa. So now we see that our unknown, as before, is the moles of weak acid. Because the problem again states to have one molar of one liter of weak base. So that number in the numerator is set to 1. So we're solving for the, the denominator again, and the denominator is the moles of um, weak acid. As we did in the previous problem, we're going to divide 1 by the ratio, in this case 7.58578, to give the moles of acid of 0.13183. We are asked to use the chloride salt of the conjugate acid. So if we determine the molar mass of CH3 and H3 plus the chloride, that molar mass is 68. Using the moles of this cation, which is equal to the moles of the formula for the uh, chloride salt, <clears throat> we're going to get 8.96 roughly grams of the chloride salt of the weak acid just showing you that I'm using 0.13183 multiplied by the molar mass of that chloride salt. And if we are going to use one mole of the weak base, the molar mass of the weak base is 31, therefore the grams is 31. So I'm going to enter 31 grams of weak base and I'm going to round this to 9.00 grams of that chloride salt.